So to say that this hasn't been one of the more interesting free agency periods in a long, long time would be a lie. Um, you guys know I made my bones um, in the draft community with the Cowboys and like was I would like to look at myself as one of the pioneers when it came to just covering the draft and the team building aspect of things. But to see the way that the Cowboys are being um, aggressive in free agency. And I want to say this, being aggressive in a way that they're not mortgaging the future. Like they're not tied to Gilmore or Cooks in a way that hurts them, hurts them if things don't work out or they don't go or things go haywire. These are actually really calculated smart moves that if they help you it was for little to nothing and they could kind of be that um that pitch hitter to close games in the world series you know to kind of make that baseball reference or you know a a, a, a page of stoyakovich added to a a already team with a lot of young guards that just needs a good shooter so this mock draft here guys for the sake of time it's a post-free agency mock draft, and I, I thought about it, but I didn't want to. I, I kind of want to just feel my way through this one because the truth of the matter is this. The Cowboys have now covered themselves. Stephon Gilmore now is a legit number two. They could go a bunch of ways um, in the first round now. Uh, what you add with Brandon Cooks is now a legit number two. So they basically spent fifth-round picks for legit number twos at the, at the receiver position and at the cornerback position. Now they can legit go into this draft, and I believe the Dallas was always going to try to go best player available, but now trading back is an option and getting more resources um, because Dallas believes in their draft philosophy. So for the sake of time, I already ran a simulator up to pick uh, 26. This is a post-free agency three-round mocker. Um, I already ran a simulator. Obviously, Will Anderson going to the Panthers isn't realistic now. Here's one thing to remember. We've had already a major trade. Um, the Panthers are going to draft the quarterback. We just don't know who. Um, we see Will Levis goes to the Lions. Paris Johnson to the Raiders. Jalen Carter goes early. D-tackle, even though we don't know how realistic that is because he may fall due to some off-the-field situation. And he just hasn't been looking good in his pro day. His movement wasn't great. Um, but I don't think that he'll fall that much. Teams do the homework. A big one here is Jackson Smith and Jigba going 15 to the, to the Packers. Now, here's a big – this is the truth, guys. Just because you sign Brandon Cooks on his one-year deal doesn't mean that you won't draft a receiver. If he falls, which, I mean, I think Green Bay is a great spot with him starting over with Jordan Love. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, here goes a big one, guys. B. John Robinson off the board to Seattle makes a lot, a lot of sense. Now, let's look at this trade offer for a second. Um this is one that's very interesting, all right? L.A. trying to get back in the first round. Dallas moving back 10 picks, but they also get pick 69 as well. We give up pick 129, which you could kind of talk me into that for that third, but I'm going to reject. Um, this is one that's interesting as well for that first round, but I'm going to reject, and we're going to stand in here and pick, okay? Pick 26, let's talk about it. So with pick 26... And, it, and you kind of see who's available here. We got Osiris Torrance down the road a little bit. Nolan Smith is really interesting, depending on how you grade him. Zay Flowers hanging in. That would be an interesting conversation for me, especially because you're not married to Brandon Cooks long term. You're going to sign CeeDee Lamb. Jameer Gibbs is interesting. Um, Anton, Harris is, is an, Anton Harrison is a name. He's from the DMV area. Um, I think he makes a lot of sense as well. But I want to do something different here. All right. When I said that the Cowboys making these moves allow them to legit go best player available, if you're telling me that DeWan Jones is standing there and standing there at pick 33 and he's staring at you, and I know I love Tyler Smith at left guard, but if you have a chance to either upgrade Tyler Smith um, and kick him and just make him an all-pro guard. And I know it's like football. You, you've always said that you want to keep him at tackle. I do. But if you have somebody graded at tackle that's better and lighter on their feet, I think that you may want to go Dewan Jones or Anton Harrison because now your line is your line is now back to 
legit, 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 legit. Like it's it's special again. You could also go guard in the second round. So those are two 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 names that I would think of. Um, and because I said that we want to run the ball, we want to we want to beast out, or we want to just build a mammoth left side of our offensive line. We're gonna draft Dewan Jones, pick twenty six. He falls. Jameer Gibbs goes right after. Peter Skaronski goes right after. He could be a name that we pick at twenty six. But the thing about Skaronski is the short arms. I like him better inside. I don't think that he has the feet of Dewan Jones. Remember, Dewan Jones Senior Bowl was so good. He just left. I mean, he 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 just knew his worth and he just left. So that's interesting. We see some names coming off the board here. Dallas is up at pick fifty eight. So. Let's talk about it. Pick 58. We are going to reject this trade. We don't want to hear about those trades, those dookie trades. Now, Darnell Washington is still on the board. To some, that may be a no-brainer. But I want to look down and see who we have here that we could possibly draft, develop. Um, mm, this is interesting. Um, again, we've done what we needed to do in free agency to allow ourselves to really go best player available at every position. Mozzie Smith is a name that I don't know if he's the one, to, he's not a, he's not the, the zero or one tech that you're looking for, but he is such a good three. He's so quick and his hands are so violent. And I think that he just comes in and can really help sure up the middle of that defense. Just the way that he plays, he's not, He's not going to eat up blocks. And we don't know what the Cowboys want to do um, with Jonathan Hankins. But I think that he's a name that we could really consider here. Um, Israel is, I, don't, I never try to say his last name. He's really um, intriguing here, a back that could play off of, off of Tony Pollard. But I think that if you want to get a back in here, right, that we just drafted Dewan Jones, and we want to get a back in here that can get downhill, I think that Zach Evans has to be the pick. Um, I think that he is, no, he's not as good as Z. Nowhere close. But I think that what he could do is uh, he can he can, he can can get downhill and he can hit those holes when Tony needs a breather. He still has some ability after the catch. And I think that with this level of coaching, I think that Zach Evans could be a great complement to who Zeke wants to be. I could have went Tajay Spears here, but I went Zach Evans because you guys know how much I love Spears. So I just wanted to kind of mix things up a little bit, get you guys another name in there to kind of get familiar with because I do agree that, that Zach Evans is flat out special. Um, not quite as good as Tajay Spears, but he, he brings a bigger body to the position, a different type of running back that, that guys would have to tackle outside of Pollard. All right, guys, pick 90 and our last pick of this three-round mock draft. I'm going to go Darius Rush. Um, I don't know how realistic it would be that he would be there staring at you in the third round, but his coverability, South Carolina cornerback, again, Kelvin Joseph experience, experiment excuse me, didn't work. Um, uh, you know, the right, Nashawn Wright experiment didn't work. You brought in Stephon Gilmore to kind of be that one-year rental get you over the hump, but you you, you got to plan ahead. I think that Darius Rush has the ability to play on the outside. Um, he was fantastic at the senior bowl, great tackler. Um, he's obviously not as good as his teammate, Cam Smith, but he's he's right there. Um, he's played big-time football. I think he comes in, he sits for a year, him, Bland, they start to take over with Diggs, just being who Diggs is on that other side of the field. You can never have enough good DBs. Um, we've seen that with the safety position and how the Cowboys value the safety position. Um, so I just think that, and, and to me, you get Rush, you get Zach Evans, and you get Dewan Jones. These are all guys who come in and they play a role immediately on this football team. They can come in, you know, Dewan Jones, your left tackle, you leave him out there, you kick Tyler, Tyler Smith inside, Zach Evans comes in, Third down back right away, but then as he gets going, as he get a, as he gets a feel for the uh, NFL game, downhill back, um, and, and and he has some breakaway ability, really physical when he wants to. Some it was sometimes I graded his film; he wasn't as physical as he needed to be. And obviously Darius Rush can never have enough good DBs. We get a lot of need here, um, and again this roster is intact. What you've done though with Stephon Gilmore and Brandon Cooks, you've upgraded this team. And you still allowed yourself now to not be pigeonholed to draft a certain way. 
So you guys let me know what you think about this mock draft. Dewan Jones, Zach Evans, Darius Rush. I think we hit a lot of need. I think this football team has gotten better with these pieces. It's your boy Foots. Peace.